So hi, everybody, and welcome to today's session. My name is Justin Crowley here with Forcepoint. And today we're going to discuss the secure gateway functionality um, built into Forcepoint 1. So when we talk about secure gateway, what are we talking about here? What we're talking about is controlling all the web traffic on your network, right? In previous videos, we've talked about CASB, right? Your cloud access security broker, protecting your managed applications. We've talked about ZTNA, protecting your internal private applications. But what about the rest of the web, right? Users going to banking websites, users going to their personal social media, their personal uh, file share applications, unsanctioned web apps. How do I as an admin control access to that, right? Within the Force Point One solution, right? So as you can see on the screen here, we have a wide range of policy when it comes to controlling access to those applications. So what we're looking to do is how do I protect malware from being downloaded from these applications? How do I apply DLP to make sure users aren't uploading sensitive data or corporate data into those applications, right? How do I prevent overblocking? And that's a big issue when you're talking about secure gateway. I don't want to overblock and have a lot of help desk tickets come into play, right? So as we've talked in previous videos, all of our contextual access control based on groups, location, device type, we can do the same thing with the secure gateway. So on my screen here, what you can see, we first thing that we have is our connection policy. One of the big things around Secure Gateway is SSL decryption, right? As you see on the screen here, one big thing that we do is we can create rules to say we're not going to intercept financial, so your banking traffic, and we're not going to intercept our health traffic, right? I can also say certain applications or certain networks, maybe I don't want to do double filtering if I already have a proxy on premise, right? So we have the ability to say what traffic should we not touch? We're not going to decrypt it. We're not going to log it. It's just going to go directly out to the internet. But the big thing that we want to focus in on here is our content policy, right? So earlier I mentioned, you know, our, our ability to apply DLP, malware scanning. So really we're taking that zero trust framework and putting it to the web, right? So our zero trust web access, right? So as you can see on the screen here, we have a wide range of different rules here, right? So first thing that we're going to look at is our DLP. Right. So my rule I have here, if you're in sales, enablement or marketing or finance, we're going to say, you know what, if you're trying to go to a personal storage site, you know, we're going to allow it. Right. We're not going to block it. We're going to allow it because we can now apply that DLP. So, again, if I want to go to my own Dropbox, no problem, because I, as an admin, know that I can now make sure that Justin's not downloading any malware onto his workstation. Right. Because I don't know what Justin already has in his Dropbox. So I'm going to scan for malware. But then also on an upload, we can say, hey, you know what? We don't want Justin uploading sensitive data into his personal Dropbox. So I can now apply that same DLP that I applied to my CASB and my ZTNA. So I now have that consistent policy across all of my different channels. I can now make sure that certain data is not being uploaded into those cloud applications. So as mentioned, we have our malware scanning, right? So our advanced threat protection, as well as our DLP, right? I can then go even further. Again, if you're in HR accessing certain traffic, I can even go based on your category, right? To just say, hey, there are certain categories, malicious categories, inappropriate categories that users are accessing. I'm going to go ahead and deny that. But we take it even a step further based on reputation, right? Just because a site is considered social networking may not be a reason to allow it. So we can look at things like the reputation to say, hey, how well known is this website? Is it well established? Has it been compromised in the last 12 to 18 months, right? So that it can adjust the reputation to say, hey, Regardless of the site, right, you can see on my screen here, regardless of the category, if there's any risk associated with it, I'm going to go ahead and deny it, right? So again, it's, you know, your web 3.0, not just category, we can go based on reputation as well. And then taking the mindset of the zero trust, we now even have isolation. And isolation is a great way to prevent overblocking, right? So in my case, for example, uncategorized. Uncategorized is a big issue when it comes to web filtering. Just because it's uncategorized doesn't mean we want to deny it, right? We're not, we just haven't learned enough about the website to determine, hey, this is file share, this is social networking. So instead of blocking it, we can isolate it. So essentially, we're rendering that page in the cloud, right, and showing a visual representation to the end user. So we're removing all that threat vector, all that active content from that website. A user can still interact with that website as if it was loading directly on their workstation, but now we're rendering that in the cloud, removing that threat, but the user can still access the website. So we don't have to block it, 
right? We're able to isolate and still allow the user access to that website. So within the secure gateway, as you mentioned, as we saw, we can do malware scanning, right? We can do our DLP, we can do our isolation, right? A way to apply that zero trust framework that we've been applying to our secure gateway and our ZTNA, we can now apply it to our secure gateway within the Forcepoint One solution. As always, if you need any more information, you can head to forcepoint.com and enjoy the rest of your day.